Hello everybody and welcome! After almost half a year we finally had an official new feature episode for the upcoming Kerbal Space Program 2. It is titled Next Gen Astronauts and mainly focuses on how games like KSP can foster the fascination for rocketry and space exploration, perfectly summarized by none other than Scott Manley right at the beginning of the video. But as usual the video contains a lot more information. Some of it are obvious, some not so much and some very much hidden. So let's dive into it. Five new reveals and one secret easter egg the video release has given us. Tylo's new lock. Almost nonchalantly the video shows us a few glimpses at a moon of jewel. I don't have official confirmation of this but I believe that this is supposed to be Tylo, the largest moon of the green gas giant. It could of course also be Val, but considering how dark, jagged and foreboding it looks this would be very much more in line with Tylo than the bluish ice moon that is Val because Tylo is a beast to land on and return. It should feel as such. Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below, because I'm quickly moving on to the next thing we learn in this video. Procedural wings. Yes, you heard that right. Procedural wings are going to be a stock feature in KSP2. Not just that, but they will also have control surfaces integrated into them. This is going to make building air or space planes a lot easier than it was the case with the original Kerbal Space Program, something the developers directly acknowledge in the video. Not only that, procedural wings will also cut down on part count significantly, especially if you're going to build a really large plane or shuttle style vehicle. What we do not know is whether or not there is going to be a limit on how large one single procedural wing is going to be. It would make sense though because the developers had said in the past that there are going to be limits on the size of vehicles you will be able to build in the vehicle assembly building. We also don't know whether or not there are going to be other procedural parts, but I would highly doubt it based on what we've seen so far. During the wing segment of the video the developers mentioned another thing though. Making life easier. A lot of the changes in how players are going to interact with KSP2 are focused on quality of life improvements. When talking about wings the developers acknowledged how much of a hassle it is to attach wing parts in the original game. Personally I think the current implementation is an atrocious mess and I love the game very dearly, so I'm certainly looking forward to what these improvements are going to be. They also mentioned that to make dealing with aerodynamics easier there will be indicators for lift effects, drag effects and mass effects. I'm Commander Shepard and this is my favorite we already have indicators in the current Kerbal Space Program for center of mass, center lift and center of thrust. And we have lift and drag indicators during flight when pressing F12, if you play on PC. Not sure if that feature is available on consoles. I'm curious how exactly lift effects and drag effects are going to be displayed during building, but that is something we haven't seen yet. And we'll talk more about building vehicles a bit later, let's focus on the make life easier part from another perspective. Tutorial details. When I was speaking with creative director Nate Simpson back in October 2019, he was very adamant that KSP2 is not going to be easier than the original game. I know that you want to make things easier in KSP2. No, 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 no. Not so, easier. No, I'm glad that you said it that okay. way. The game itself remains as challenging as the original game. Right. Okay. In fact, in some ways a little more challenging. They do want to make it more accessible though, acknowledging that many players, <laughs> myself included, had to watch YouTube tutorials before they were able to leave the confines of Kerman's gravity. What was important was for us to change the first time user experience so that we're easing people into the core concepts of the game in a way that's more intuitive. Yeah. So that they don't have to go watch one of your videos or one of Scott Manley's right. videos to understand how to play the game. Kerbal Space Program 2 is supposed to integrate a fun and easily understandable learning experience by offering optional tutorials for novice players. Apparently the four year old daughter of the studio boss is one of the test users, so if she understands it and you don't, I guess you can't really blame the developers for that. 
unless that child is a super genius that will overthrow the world order as we know it and develop faster than light travel before she reaches the age of 15. One of the concepts the tutorials focus on is the difference in engine types. Big, heavy and powerful to get a rocket out of the atmosphere or out of a large gravity well and small, lean and efficient for long-distance travel and better fuel economy. They are using two Kerbal athletes as representation for this concept. I'm interested in what else these tutorials will touch on, but personally I think the approach of making them optional is great for experienced players and teaching spaceflight concepts in a manner that even toddlers can understand could be a game-changer for our society. I'm not even joking. What's also not to joke about is our next item on the list. New VAB interface. The vehicle assembly building has gone through another revision since we last saw it. Nate Simpson explains some of the new concepts during that part of the video. Here are the two standout features. You will be able to work on multiple sub-assemblies at the same time. This means you can work on multiple booster variants and try them out before deciding on one. What would be really great is if the game would remember the unfinished sub-assemblies when launching the vehicle and lets you pick up your work if you revert to the editor. This could be really useful for testing multiple configurations. And secondly, we were shown a feature that lets you view your creation on an orthogonal grid, which is going to make it a lot easier to align parts compared to the original KSP, where the camera angle often prevented you from doing that. Really looking forward to that. Regarding the interface itself, let's try to dissect it a little. We now have seen three versions of it since the update in June of last year. This was how it looked then. This is the well visible screen we got in the most recent video and this here is a shot over Nate's shoulder while he explains the orthogrid feature. We can see different layouts in all three of them, most notably the positioning of this element with icons that will probably give us build checklist, staging interface, custom paint functionality, probably the engineer's report, potentially a payload configuration interface what is very likely the already announced trip planner functionality, most likely similar to a Delta V map. And then there is this, which could be a version history that allows you to step back to previous iterations of your vehicle. Then again, that button and also the presumed trip planner are nowhere to be seen during Nate's part of the video. Instead, we have this and... I got nothing. Sorry. Most of the stuff we can see during this segment I already talked about in the video I did last year, when we first saw the new VAB in action, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. However, it appears that the Fly Safe homage to Scott Manley was just the vehicle's name. What is notable though is that Nate's version of the VAB looks a lot different from the other two. And aside from the unknown icon, it also offers more details that are not explicitly mentioned. There is a button to filter by fuel type, something that probably offers you to change between list view and a visual preview as we are used to up until now. We can also see more details of the staging interface with indicators for how much fuel is present in each stage and the delta V for set stage. Since even the parachute has these UI elements, it's safe to assume that those are just placeholders. Maybe Nate is showing us a really outdated version here, or it is the other way around and his view is more recent than the stuff we can more easily see before that. Who knows when each of these were recorded. But what is this? It's 2021 and you're using DVI? How does that jive with your RGB mouse? Also, I see Lego behind the screen, but I can't recognize what it is. Any one of you out there know what it might be? Sound off in the comments. But now we're going to into the obscure and secretive stuff. The things they don't want you to know. Or actually they probably do. Anyway, our final item. Secret Easter eggs. If you look at the chapter information of the video, you will notice that the final one says something more. When the video says produced by, it starts to glitch out and we are just left with a rocket, from the looks of it from KSP1, flying unattended with some weird noises in the background.
Leave it to the hive mind of Kerbal fans around the world to almost immediately decode the secret message hidden in this part of the video. Apparently the audio can be decoded to produce this, which appears to be the Kerbal version of the Arecibo message. The large plus indicates the sun, the smaller dots the rocky planets and the big dot is supposed to be Joule. The line from the third planet tells whoever decodes this message that the rocket below comes from there and has left its planet, depicted by the curve at the bottom. There is still a healthy discussion going on whether or not the 12 dots at the top indicate 12 new star systems, or if they are just markers to signify the 23 columns since 23 is a prime number and the audio pattern repeats every 23 characters. However, this is not just the only potential secret hidden in this video. During the tutorial portion of this episode we can see a scientist musing at the solar system with a weird trajectory going far out, beyond even Elu, and hinting at maybe a new yet undiscovered planet. However, notice how between Duna and Joule there is no orbit? Drez truly does no longer exist in KSP2. Or maybe we are just witnessing its discovery. Whatever may be the case, we are probably going to find out when the game is going to be released. Speaking of which, the current release date is still set for 2022 without going into more specifics. So we are going to have to wait yet another year until we can get our hands on Kerbal Space Program 2. Which is fine by me, because the original still has a lot to offer despite its age and update 1.12 is already around the corner. But what did you think about a new feature reveal video? Did I miss something? Do you have another take on some of the things I mentioned? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to know your thoughts on that. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.